Hi everyone and welcome back to Dev Portal, your go-to channel for mastering database concept. In today's video, we are diving into performance optimization in PostgreSQL by understanding dead tuple and live tuple concept. So first, let's discuss what we are going to cover today in this video. We will start with the dead tuple and live tuple concept and then we will see how dead tuple impact database performance. Along with this, we are going to use vacuum, analyze and auto vacuum to clean up those dead tuples and then we will see how re-indexing can improve our query performance. So let's start our today's discussion by understanding the concept of tuple first. In PostgreSQL, tuple are rows in a table. Every time when we do a insert, update or delete in a data, then Postgres manages those data in form of tuple. Now what is live tuple? Live tuple are active rows that are currently valid and visible to the query. They are represent the latest committed version of a row. On the other hand, dead tuples are outdated rows of a version that are no longer needed but still exist in a table. These occurs when a row is updated and deleted. When a row is updated, in that case, the older version of the data remains as a dead tuple and when a row is deleted, the row remains in the table but marked as a deleted row. Now as you can see the query which I have written, it will fetch all the records from the employees table and I have applied order by clause as well on employee ID. As you can see there are total 17 records and whenever we update a record or whenever we delete a record in that case a dead tuple will get generated in the same table. But here the question arises that why do a dead tuple exist in a database. As Postgres follows multi-version concurrency control architecture where each transaction works as a snapshot of the data. When a row is updated Postgres does not modify the row directly itself but instead it will create a new version and mark the old row as a dead tuple. And for the deleted rows, they are not immediately removed but marked as a dead tuple. Now you might be wondering that how a dead tuple can impact the database performance. As dead tuple going to consume the disk space, it can slow your query performance because Postgres must scan through dead tuples to fetch the valid data and the index which you have created that will also grow which will make your query slower. And table and indexes may become bloated as well which will increase the storage requirement in your disk. So now let's see that how we can identify how many live tuple and dead tuple exist in our table. So for that we need to run one query let me show you. So first let me remove this query. So what I'm going to do I will fetch schema name, table name and for those particular tables we are going to fetch live tuple and dead tuple count. Let me show you. So first let me write select and then I need to mention schema name that is schema name and after that I am going to fetch the table name. So for that I need to mention rel name and let give me this alias as table underscore name and to fetch the live tuple count I need to mention n underscore live underscore tup and for dead tuple I need to mention n underscore dead underscore tup and this data will come from pg stat users table so I will mention from pg underscore stat underscore user underscore tables and if I run this query it will give me the schema name table name along with its live tuple and dead tuple count. Let me show you. So you can see it here we have total 11 records. In 11 records you can see schema name is staff and for that is staff schema employees is one table and for that table the live tuple and dead tuple count is 0. If I come to the third row you can see it here. Here the public here the schema name is public and the table name is student where we have total 12 live tuple count and 5 dead tuple count. And if I come little bit more down, you can see it here for row number 6 under demo schema there is an employees table where the live tuple count is almost 5 crore and the dev tuple count is also high. This table we have created last time when we are understanding materialized view. If you remember, under that we have inserted 5 crore data and we have seen the performance difference between views and materialized view. If you didn't watch that video, you can watch it out. Link I will give you in the i section. So this is how we can fetch the live tuple and dead tuple count from our database. As we know that dead tuple consume the disk space so it can slow your query as well. So now let's see how we can overcome from this problem. How we can improve the performance of our database and we can overcome from this dead tuple problem. So for that what we can do, one thing we can do is that we can run the vacuum command. What vacuum command will do, it will remove the dead tuples from the database itself and it will help us to reclaim the disk space as well. Let me show you the command first. So for that what you can do you just need to mention vacuum. So I will write vacuum and after that I need to mention table name that is suppose public dot employees. 
So by running the vacuum query, it will help us to reclaim the disk space. If I go a little bit up, you can see for the employees table. Okay, not for the employees table. What we can do, we can mention students table. And now if I run this query, we will see that it will reduce our dead tuple count as well. So first let me run this query. And now you can see query got executed. Now if I show you the stats, you can see for students table it is zero. So what this query will do, it will remove those dead tuple from the table and it will help us to reclaim that disk space. But one thing that we need to remember is that it will not update the statistics for the query planner. If you want your statistics also need to be updated, in that case you can do vacuum analyze. Let me show you. If I write vacuum and after that I need to mention analyze. Now if I run this query, uh, let me take another table, suppose departments I am taking. So let me write departments. And if I execute this query, it will remove the dead tuple count as well and it will update my query planner as well. So if I run this query again, so query got executed. Now if I show you the stats again. So for department as well, you can see the dead tuple count is zero and we have reclaimed our space as well. So this is how we can reclaim our disk space and improve the query performance of our database. But as you can see, this is the manual process. As first, we need to identify the tables and then we need to execute this command. In PostgreSQL, it will also allow us the auto vacuum feature as well, which process will automatically remove those dead tuples from our table. Let me show you how we can do that. Just we need to enable the auto vacuum feature for a particular table. If if you can see for the table that is demo dot employees table here, the dead tuple count is very high. So what we can do, we can enable auto vacuum feature rather than every time coming to the query tool and, and execute these commands. We can all we can set the threshold value for a particular table, suppose 1000. So once the dead tuple count will exceed the 1000, it will automatically remove those dead tuple from the table and our disk space will also get reclaimed. So let me show you first that how we can enable the auto vacuum feature for a particular table. So for that we need to execute one alter command. So I will write alter and table table name i need to provide that is demo dot employees and to set the value we need to use set command and we need to provide auto vacuum vacuum threshold so i will write set and under brackets i need to mention auto vacuum underscore vacuum underscore threshold t h r e s h o l d and let me provide the value suppose 1000 so once my dead tuple count exceed 1000 value, it will automatically reclaim my disk space and it will remove those dead tuple from my table. So let me execute this command first or before executing what I can do, let me open the database here. Let me go to the demo schema and here we have table that is employees table. Let me go to the properties first. So if you come to the parameter section here, you can see custom auto vacuum is not enabled. And by default, the base value of threshold is 50. So first, let me execute this command first and then we will verify this, this value is reflecting or not. So let me execute this command. So alter got executed successfully. Now let me refresh this first. So let me go to the properties first and after that I need to go to the parameter sections. And here you can see the custom auto vacuum is enabled and the vacuum value that is threshold value is 1000, which means whenever a dead tuple count will exceed this 1000 value, my database itself will do the auto vacuum activity for me. Now this time, what benefit we will get manually, we are not doing this vacuum activity. So my database will take care of this thing and my dead tuple counts will get reduced to zero or you can say it will get removed from the table and my disk space will also get reclaimed. So this is all about vacuum, vacuum analyze and auto vacuum. Now let's discuss how reindexing can improve the performance of a database. As you might be aware that the indexes that you have created in your table, it will grow over the time due to update and deletion that we are doing in the table. And Postgres does not automatically shrink those indexes and it will lead to the index bloating. And what index bloating can do, it will slower the performance of a query. So now let's see that how we can identify a bloated index present in our database or not. For that we need to execute one query and that will show the size of that index and accordingly we can analyze or understand that that is a bloated index or not. So first let me close this window and let me remove all these queries first. And now what I'm going to do, I will write one select query and from that select query I will fetch schema name, 
table name, index name and the size of that index. So first let me write select and after that let me fetch schema name first. So for that I need to mention schema name and this is my schema underscore name. Same way I will fetch table name for that I need to mention rel name and let me give this alias as well table underscore name. Same way I am going to fetch index name as well so for that I need to mention index and after index I need to mention rel name and let me give this alias as well this is my index underscore name. After that we are going to fetch index size and to fetch the index size we need to use one function that is pg underscore size underscore pretty and here we need to mention pg underscore relation underscore size and here we need to mention index rel id and this will give me the size of the index so let me give as index underscore size and all these stats will come from pg underscore stat underscore user underscore indexes so let me execute this query and after executing the query we will get schema name table name then index name and index size so let me execute this query first so you can see okay so it has given the error that is function does not exist okay i have not given the correct name so let me correct it pg underscore relation underscore size now relation i think it is fine let me execute it again so as you can see we got total four records and for four records we have a schema name table name index name and index size the index size is same for all of the four indexes that we have present in our database but it cannot be the case for you for our database it is same because we haven't modified that much content in our tables so this is how we can identify the index size and by identifying the index size we can identify that for which index we need in re-indexing as well so now let me show you that how we can do re-indexing in our database. So first let me remove this query. So first let me show you that how we can do re-indexing on a particular index. So for that we need index name as well. So let me take suppose departments. So this index I will take and here I will mention re-index index and I need to mention index name that is department primary key. If I execute this query you can see you can see reindexing has been done and now let me again execute the previous query so let me undo this first so if I execute this query again still it is 16 kb but if any bloated index is present in that case it will reduce the size for you let me show you the previous command again so it was reindexing index name so this is how we can do our indexing on a particular index now let me show you that how we can do our indexing on a particular table so for that we need to mention reindex and after that we need to mention table and table name suppose it is public dot employees so this is how you can do reindexing on a particular table and if you want to do reindexing on an entire database in that case you need to mention reindex and you need to mention database database and after that you need to mention the database name in my case it is postgres as you can see here it is a database that is postgres so i need to mention postgres and after executing this command it will do reindexing on my entire database so when should we go for the reindexing so first when a query performance is slowed down due to large index size in that case we can go for the reindexing and if in pg stats you found that a larger index is present in your database in that case as well you can do the reindexing for that particular index and whenever you are doing the vacuum activity manually ideally you should do the reindexing as well because you are removing the dead tuple from your table so that dead tuple already part of your index as well so those size you can remove with the help of reindexing of your database indexes so this is all about live tuple, dead tuple, vacuum activity, auto vacuum and reindexing. Now let's discuss some of the best practices for performance optimization. So the first thing is that we should ensure auto vacuum is enabled to automatically clean up those dead tuples from a table. And for larger tables, I will suggest you to schedule a manual vacuum activity during non-peak hours. And we should check the dead tuple count periodically on our database. And during monitoring, if you found there is an index which is too large, in that case, you should go for the reindexing for that particular index as well. So, to summarize, dead tuple slow down the query performance and increase the storage in our database, whereas vacuum and vacuum analyze will help us to remove those dead tuple from a table. 
auto vacuum will help automatically manage that activity for cleanup of the dead tuples and reindexing is necessary to keep index effective and maintain query performance. So that's it for today's video on dev portal. Notes link I will give you in the description box as well as in the comment section so you can check it out. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from our channel. And please share these videos with your fellow developers as well who are learning database and PostgreSQL. And I will see you in the next video.